Hello and welcome. My name is Sanjay Soni. Here is Rafat, who will be giving us an introduction into Azure Cosmos DB resource model and security. Let's get started. Hi, Rafat. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Great. So what do you do at Microsoft? I'm a program manager in Cosmos DB team. Awesome. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about Cosmos DB security. All right. So uh, to explain it very well, let me show you my this slide. As you can see in this slide that we have multiple layer of security on top of Cosmos DB. Because Cosmos DB is an Azure service, so we get a lot of security out of the box just being on Azure. So Azure protect us from DDoS, they have their policies and procedures, and they protect us, you know, physical security of the data center and things like that. So the next layer is IP firewall. So you can set up an IP firewall around Cosmos DB. So only approved services and system can access Cosmos DB, no other, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have a VNet also enabled on Cosmos DB. So you can have a service endpoint of Cosmos DB defined. So only services which are inside your VNet can access Cosmos DB. So this is the second layer of security on top of it. And the third is, uh, after IP firewall and VNet, still you have to have the keys, the master keys, to access Cosmos DB. And then all the data is encrypted on the wire and it's encrypted on the disk. So you don't have to do anything, no configuration needed, everything is encrypted. So it is very, very secure database as such. That's awesome. And I've heard about control plane and data plane. Can you please explain that? Sure. So to explain control plane, let me quickly show you the Cosmos DB resource model. So if you see on top, we have a Cosmos DB and uh, account. And beneath that, we have a database and then the collection and every collection have the documents. So the collection we talk about here, it can be, you know, graph collection or documents or Cassandra or Mongo. Uh, and depend on what API you choose when you are creating this account. And so when I say control plane, by that I mean everything happening between the account and the keys, all the action pertaining to the account and keys comes under control plane. And control plane does have an AD integration. So if your users are defined in AD, you can clearly give them the permission for this control plane actions. In the, in the Active Directory? In the Active Directory. Okay. And what are actions are there in control plane? So all the actions where you go ahead and create um, the, the account or manipulate the keys, uh, refresh the key, things like that. And the other part, what happens is when you are doing any action in control plane, it's all logged in, logged in our diagnostic logs, right? So you will see the email of the person who is looking at the keys, who have rotated the keys, who have created the, uh, the account and things like that. So all the activity is logged with the email in control plane. Okay. But everything in data plane, and the data plane is this, all the activity here with the database and beneath that collection and documents and attachment and all that, that's a data plane action and for that, to do anything on data plane, you have to have the master key and the read-only key to do any action there. So they, here, we don't have Active Directory integration at the moment, but it is on our roadmap. It's coming soon. But for now, you can use the, you know, you can log whatever action is happening and, you know, all this create database, list database, um, get a database, and all that, uh, you know, different kind of permission to create document, replace document, all this is a data plane activity, okay? And when you log this data plane activity, you do get the IP of the machine from where it is accessed. So this is uh, in very short, what is control plane and what is data plane? It's important because control plane is very important. Uh, you can have the active directory integration there. And for data plane, you can use the Cosmos DB master keys and read only keys. All right, Rafat, you previously talked about IP firewall. Can you please show us how to set it up? Sure, it is very simple. Let's go and look at our portal. So here I'm on my portal and one of the options here in the menu is firewall and VNet, virtual network. When I click this, I come to this screen here and as you can see, I can just choose allow access from all networks or I can say only selected networks. And here I can, literally put the IP address 
or the range of IP addresses from where we, only the services from those IP addresses can access Cosmos DB. I see. So once you they set up this thing, all access is blocked, okay? And we talked about uh, VNet also, and you can see the VNet here too. So I can click this and add any virtual network here. And then what happens is, once I define my VNet already, the Cosmos DB goes as a you know, service endpoint in virtual network. And as you can see, it's as simple as that. I choose my subscription, and then if I have my other virtual networks, they will show up here, all this my virtual networks, and then I can choose one of them and then just select a subnet, and my Cosmos DB will be, the service endpoint will be in that virtual network. And that's it. Uh, I'm not going to set up my VNet here, but this is as simple as that. Wow. That you just choose these uh, few uh, things, subscription, VNet, and subnet, and your Cosmos DB service endpoint is the in the VNet, okay? All right, that's a great demo. So uh, can you please tell us how to write a secure application? So for secure application, let's, uh, let's you know, go back to my slide because I want to show you a picture here. So as you can see in this slide that I have a Cosmos DB and I have a service. So often people ask us that, you know, I have this master key and read-only key and we are worried to give it to devs and what happened if somebody steal. So first of all, you should never have the keys in the code or in the config file. Never have those keys anywhere. You should always have the keys in the key vault. And second is, have a service which can access Cosmos DB and have your this application. Now here this application is just shown as one instance, but this can be your you know, website and it, there, there can be 10,000 instances of this. All these different instances of the application should call one middle tier service. We, let's call it data service for our discussion sake. So this data service should have access to Cosmos DB, nobody else. So, agreed when you are writing this service, your uh, database is exposed with the dev, but once it is done, all your other dev of different tier, the, the front end and the middle tier maybe, always deal with this service. And the beauty of this architecture is, when this application is calling this data service, they can have an AD integration, and I can know the identity of the user who is calling me. So depending on who is the user, I can put a small business rule here in this data service that whether he has access to this collection, he can access this partition key or not. So all that business rule I can write here in this service. And then this service, I put uh, you know, under a VNet and I put this uh, service endpoint of Cosmos DB under this VNet and put an IP firewall around Cosmos DB so nobody from anywhere can access Cosmos DB. So your Cosmos DB is very secure now, that's instance, okay? And then only this service can access, so all the access to data retrieval, all the CRUD operation goes through this. And this way, uh, there are a couple of benefits is out there, right? This is the three-tier architecture we all use for a long time, we all know about it. The other benefit is, you know, you have this abstraction layer, Agreed, you are, you know, you may be adding few milliseconds for extra hop, but it is giving you a lot of security. Now, you want to rotate the key, you can rotate the key, and only this service has to, you know, dump his cache and get the new key. Not your 10,000 applications which are out in the wild having this key or anything, right? So that's one of the benefits, and obviously because of the three-tier architecture, you can have different team working on different component of that. So this is the most secure way you should write application using Cosmos DB. And um, let me know if you have any more questions on this. Awesome, actually I do. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, some uh, frequently asked questions from uh, some of our uh, customers. Okay. And uh, think of it as a more of a lightning round of questions. Sure. So I'm going to ask you these questions. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. How much does it cost to enable encryption? Nothing. It's free. All right. Yeah. What regions have encryption turned on? All the region, everywhere. So you don't have to turn on any configuration, nothing. It's all encrypted all the time, free for you. All right. And does encryption affect any performance or latency? No, nothing. No, no impact on SLA. You still get 10 millisecond read, 
15 millisecond right. And if you have multi-region, it's all single digit SLA. All right, thank you so much for these answers. And also thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, welcome. Thank you for watching this micro learning readiness video about Azure Cosmos DB. To learn more, please visit azure.com forward slash Cosmos DB. Please stay tuned for more videos.